Hey everybody, at BV Matson here. Y'all keep telling me how you missed the long form videos. So here's a long form video for you as we restore a vintage motorcycle seat. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so here's what we've got. A 1968 CB350 motorcycle seat that is rotted out in a big, big way. Look at this. I think the mice might have got to this. Pan is there. Pan is real rusty. We know this is a 68 because it has no pleats in the seat. It's just a smooth cover seat, and it's got one band that goes along the, the, the middle there. We're going to have to dismantle this whole thing and de-rust and repaint the seat. This is, note, a rear hinge seat. Here's the front latch, and in the back is where we would mount... The rear hinge. Once we tear the seat apart, I do have a seat foam that's in really, really good condition off of a later model CB350. And then I did go ahead and procure myself a new seat cover for this. This was actually pretty cheap, like 30, 40 bucks, I think, in order to get one of these. And it did come with the center strap as well. I have no idea where that went right now, but that is what we are working with here. We're going to take this, and we are going to restore it so it looks amazing on the 1968 CB350, which is all kind of hanging out in boxes over here. First things first, we got to get this thing kind of down to the pan. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my razor blade and just kind of start cutting this off. There ain't no salvaging <laughs> really anything here at all. So let's just kind of start chipping away at it. God, oh my God, here, inside here, we can see remnants of the mice. This thing had mice living in it. Look at this mouse nest. <laughs> this thing definitely had critters inside of it. Not surprising. This bike was actually stored outside for many, many years. Let's see how much is in here. Hopefully there's no active mice with inside of it. I don't think there is, but yeah, they did a they did a number on this. Hope they found a new food source because he's gone. All right, let's flip this over. And what you're gonna see on these seats is there's gonna be little tabs underneath here that we're gonna need to bend out. Let's just get after it. So we're just gonna need to start bending some of these tabs. We're gonna go all the way around they're sharp little buggers, but you want to bend these out to be about 90 degrees out. That's what you really want to do. Little flathead screwdriver is pretty much all you're going to need for that. Maybe a pair of pliers might help you too, but you're going to want to go around all the way around and make sure that you get every last one of these buggers. Try not to break them off. That's kind of the other key. You don't want to break these off. You need these mounting points for when you put that cover back on. One tab at a time, one knuckle buster at a time. You'll get there. Just get them all out. All right, and once you've got those all kind of bent out, you should be able to start to pull the cover away from the main part of the seat here, or the seat pan, as they call it. I've got one more remnant here. Ugh. So far, none of them have broke off, which is great. See a little, I see a lot of rust, to be quite honest. And as we're getting to this point, we're going to be able to pull this all off. Looking pretty rusty. We've got one crack. I don't even see that. I'll show you here in close up here in a little bit. But one nice big crack in that. Should probably try to weld that. It's pretty much off. Got a couple more little tabs here to get. And then we'll get all these pointed out 90 degrees. Then we'll go from there. All right, got all that detached. I've got all my garbage material here. That'll go straight in the trash can. Nothing nothing really to save there. But here is the part that I'd like to keep intact, just, just as a reference, and that's this pad. Feels like there's some light adhesive attached to this. Yeah, there's just a little bit. You can see right here, there's a little bit of adhesive in that this contour on this back side though i'm actually very interested in salvaging as best as i can and there we go 
there is the seat pan. This is going to be needed to be uh, sandblasted for sure. Unfortunately, I do see um, a crack here. There's grommets going there and a crack here. So it's cracked on both sides. You can either weld this or I may even be able to just rivet this, right? So I might be able to just rivet this together. Not sure. I'm, I'm not a welder. That's the one skill that I'm really lacking. But this bad boy needs to get cleaned up. Let's take a closer look at the pan. And that is one rusty pan. Look at that. These cracks kind of bug me. I'd like to get those welded up. Maybe I might have to test out my welding skills. It's going to take some work. I think one thing just to keep in mind, you want to get these all pointed out, all of these. Get them at least 90 degrees pointed out. It'll make your life a lot easier when you're putting it all back together. But essentially, this pan needs to get sandblasted or de-rusted. Sandblasting would be the easiest thing to do, quite honestly. Um, here's what I'll probably end up using for this. I picked up one of these little handheld sandblasting guns. You load the uh, compound or the blasting material inside that canister, and you hook it up to your air compressor. And You know, it's not bad. I think it'll do the job for sure on something like this. So... This was really cheap on Amazon. I want to say it was like 30, 40 bucks, something like that. Not a bad little tool to have in the arsenal. Um, but I think one night I'm just going to kind of fire up the air compressor and take it outside and blast this thing down, get this down to a bare metal. This thing's got to get blasted, then it's got to get painted. I'll probably use a VHT on it. But. This needs to be addressed. That should be addressed. Those should be welded up. That would be nice. I mean, it's not a deal breaker if we don't do anything with that, but it is a weak point in that seat. And flipping back over to the actual cushion, there's not a whole lot of material left here, but you can see that this is a really a low profile seat. And keep in mind, this is all dried up and all this, right? So it's not perfect. It's not totally dry but it's not the best. Now I have this later model. I think this is off a 71 or a 72 where the seats got a little bit more bulky on these bikes. Let's take a look at the differences here. So the first place to start is always cmsnl.com. Go look up your bike and go take a look at the parts list. Here is a KO, a 1968 CB350 Honda. It's a KO model and everything has exploded views. So here you can see I found the seat and you can get a detailed photo of what that looked like and all the parts. Well, mostly all the parts. The next thing that I like to do after cmsnl.com is to go do some Google searches. Go do some Google searches. Go check out some images of original photos or of fully restored bikes. I really like advertising photos because they really capture the essence of what the bikes really were. And here you can see exactly what we're going for. That seat is what we are trying to create out of that mess that you see on the bench right now. Use the internet. Do your research. Like seriously, spend some time doing some research and looking at full restorations. This really gave me an idea of the target I was going for with the seat restoration. If I would have relied on the seat, kind of looking at it as it was on the bench, I would have never got this right or as close to right as I think I end up getting it. But there we go. I love advertising photos. I love image searches. Get after it before you start. Really, the next step is to crank up the air compressor. God, this has been a game changer getting that in my life. And then I'm just gonna do some quick sandblasting. I've got all my safety gear here. I've got a visor, I've got big long gloves, I've got a mask, I'm wearing a hooded sweatshirt, long sleeves. And uh, basically, time to sandblast this, get this as clean as possible. Got my fine grit over there. I'm gonna try a couple, I've got a couple different guns that I'm gonna try to get through this with. But yeah, we gotta get that thing clean. All right, everything seems to be going pretty smooth. I'm breaking through it pretty quick actually. Little ways to go, tough to film sandblasting. 
Not taking too long, probably gonna take me about a half hour. And there we go, about 30 minutes with fine coal slag sandblasting. Got it pretty good. There's some tough spots that I'll probably go back in and hit uh, with the wire wheel just a little bit, but this is a seat pan. It don't have to be perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and select my paints and I'll be sure to use a uh, rust preventative or a rust neutralizing paint on this. This should be good to go. One part that I did make sure I cleaned up really, really well was where these cracks are. I'm actually gonna have a buddy of mine tack this together for me on both sides. Tried to clean those up as best as I can so that can get welded. We'll get that welded, we'll get that ready, we'll get it painted. I don't need to show you how to paint a seat pan. One thing worth noting is be sure to clean any surfaces really well if you're welding. And while we got a little bit of welding going on in the background on that seat, just wanna show you what paint I decided to go with. From Ace Hardware, it's a rust stop, no primer required, prevents rust and corrosion, direct on metal, no primer needed, dries in 30 minutes. Got a nice satin black. We should be good once we get things welded up. Once it's welded up, it's time to lay down some paint. You know I love laying down paint. Seat pan doesn't have to be perfect, right? But the bottom side, the visible side, when you tip the seat up, we do want that to look pretty clean. So yeah, once we got the paint on, it was game on. All right, back at it. We got the uh, pan all painted up and we did the best we could welding up these little cracks. Came out okay, stuff was pretty thin, kind of blew through, but got it done. Now we can start to focus on the actual cover and the cushion. So the next little step is doing a test fit. All right, and in order to do this, we're gonna just flip this bad boy over because this is where things are gonna get installed. I'm gonna grab my cover and I'm going to grab my cushion. All right, I'm gonna lay this on here. Make sure you got the front is the front and the front is the back. Easiest way to tell the front, basically you're gonna have a whole bunch of different bendies up front here to get that front lip. And on the back is kind of where you'll see that hinge mount. Right off the bat, it's pretty darn good. Again, I think the only part I'm gonna have a real problem with is this slight little angle here on this back side. But you can see here over on the side, this is gonna drop down just perfectly and it's already cut out for where that strap is gonna go. And we've got the padding that'll come all the way down. It actually fits perfectly. I'm not sure if there was really a difference in these seat foams from year to year or not. I think that one I had was just super dehydrated, flattened out, and it kind of misled me a little bit as far as what's going on. On the front edge, look at that. That is gonna be perfect. That'll roll right down into those connections. I feel really good about Let's it. Let's go ahead and do a quick test fit. I'm gonna move this all right into position. I mean, this is actually perfect. It feels perfect. It sits on there just perfectly. I say perfect enough. And we're gonna take our thin end. We're gonna go around the front. And we're gonna pull this one back over the back. And again, we're just gonna do a quick little test foot, a test fit just to make sure that we can get it. This stuff is actually pretty forgiving. Um, you know, you're gonna be able to suck this stuff down just a little bit to get stuff to fit right. And we'll just see if we can kind of massage this into position here. I'm gonna flip the pan over just like that. And this is where we're gonna kind of tackle our little, our little rivets or our little pokies. So what you wanna do at the end of the day is you've got a seam, right? You've got your seam. You want your seam to kind of align with the bottom of all of this stuff. So I'm just gonna kind of get started here. I'm gonna pull my seam up and I'm just ever so gently gonna hook it. Let me show you that a little bit better here. I'm not poking it through. I am just kind of poking it to hold it in position. And the goal is to get that seam running all the way nice and even along this bottom edge. So this could be a little test of patience for sure. But I'm just gonna start kind of from one end and just start positioning the material. Try to get some tension built up. So maybe I'll hop over to this other side and we'll grab this as well from this corner, just like this. 
fold that over, get that lined up really nice, pull it into position, and again, just gently drop that down. And grab that one, we can do the same thing here. Again, I just wanna do a nice test fit so I can get this seam running as even as possible. It's a tedious process. Take your time. This test fit is really important. All right. So for now, I think I'm close enough. I've got this thing just kind of punched in here. Let's flip it over. See what we've got. And you know what? I think if I just pull a little bit tighter when I do my final pull, I think I'm going to be just fine. This front end is going to be perfect. But if I look back here... I do have just a little bit. So here's where that, that weird shape is coming from. I feel like I'm gonna need to get a little bit of filler in on this, or maybe I can just pull this back a little bit more because you can see it's not quite there. I want this strip to be back here. I'm just wondering if I need to add a little bit of filler. And looking here, I don't like being able to see this shape here so just trying to see if there's some material i can pull down ah and there is once this gets a little tighter around here that is actually gonna look really good i just need to make sure that i pull this down so i think working front to back is going to be the way to go on this because i want this really tight right there this actually looks really, really good. What do you think? I think the key is just to make sure that you're getting all of this padding and all this material up and over on these ends. Because see here, I've got just a little bit that kind of curls up underneath. So I just want to make sure that that's kind of protruding on that a little bit. And I think we'll be able to be good to go. I don't think I need to modify this at all. And then we'll have our strap that goes in and holds that all down. I'm pretty pleased. Let's go ahead and take this all back apart. Because I do have a couple of small issues that I need to deal with. So one of the problems I'm having is that when we did weld this up, it did weaken a couple of my mounting points, and I actually lost one mounting point over here as well. So I went and picked up some utility hooks. Um, these are kind of heavy. They're pretty sturdy. I'm going to be able to kind of sharpen the point on these and then bolt a few of these in where I'm going to need a little bit extra support. Unfortunately, I think I lost two, maybe three of those mounting points. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug a few of these in and that should help me get this thing nice and tight. In preparation for the seat restoration, a Keep On Wrencher recommended that I watch the Bigfoot Bikes and Brews playlist on motorcycle seat restoration. Big thanks for that and big thanks to them. I got a ton of great ideas from this. Go ahead and give them a subscribe. All right, so there we go. Quick trip to the grinder and I sharpened these little points. I can go ahead and mount those to the seat. These little utility hooks worked perfect. If you're missing one, go ahead and plug them in. All right, got my holes pre-drilled. I'm gonna go ahead and do my flat side of my bolt on the top side. And I'm just gonna take this, and get this down into position, just like that. And look at how nice that's gonna lay in there. I'll be able to tap that down and get it exactly where I need it, paint it black, Nobody is gonna know. No one's gonna know. And here's a little closer look at that repair. Just using these little utility hooks. I've got an extra hook here. <laughs> Good, gonna go ahead and do that on the other side as well and look for some other weak spots. I may put one more right here because this one, it's, I can almost move that with my finger. It's, there's not much there. So I'll probably put one more here and then one over on the other side. If you're missing a whole bunch of mounting points, go and take a tip from Bigfoot Bikes and Brews. They use metal carpet tack strips, and they actually bolted those in to the seat. That gave them a full line all the way around the seat. Absolutely brilliant. In my case, these single connectors were really all I needed. 
All right, just gonna finish this up. We got one more to go. Put a total of four in just to make sure that I'm in good shape. And I tell you what, these things I think are gonna work out very, very well for this application. Love this. All right, with all of our tabs in, kind of our updated tabs, we can go ahead and go for final fitting. I feel pretty good about it, actually. I'm just gonna be really aware of these ends. Make sure that these ends are all going all the way down and that my end is lipping. There's actually a little lip on here for the front end of the seat as well. I just wanna make sure those stay intact. And let's go ahead and pull the seat cover over the top. The test fit went really, really well. So I'm optimistic. Again, we're just gonna try and keep our seams and our different kind of beads where we need them as we start to pull this thing into position. And it's already kind of wanting to go where we want it. This wasn't as arduous of a task as I thought it was gonna be, to be quite honest. But just keeping this, this uh, foam in the right spot, that is the ticket. So I'm gonna go ahead and start lining up my seams. I think I'm gonna start in the middle because I have like a pretty good reference point. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull that first seam all the way up to where I need it. Let's see, let's go a little bit easier. That felt like a lot of tension. Pull that down and I'm actually gonna bust through the scrim. Let's start working our way around. All right, I've got my first one in. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna kind of angle that down so that doesn't pop out again. And just kind of reach around, watching my seam line. Gotta get around here on this side. And I just wanna be as consistent as I possibly can. Just like that. I'm actually gonna move this one just a little bit. Poke that through there just like that. And we can pull this one through there just like that. And just kind of slow and steady, I'm gonna work around side by side. This is really some, some tedious stuff. Again, I can already see kind of on this back side that my lip went down underneath, so I gotta get that out. Then I can go ahead and pull my seam nice and easy. Let's bend this down just a little bit. And working my way towards the back side of the bike. All right, now I'm gonna try and pull all the way to the front. Get this part of it mounted where I need it. That looks pretty good to me right here. Just like that. And we'll be able to pull this all into shape, but I'm just kind of watching the front end of the seat. Here's the pan. I'm just kind of feeling where that goes. I've got a connector point right here. I'm gonna pull that down there, just like that. And I'm gonna pull that down there. Just like that. Sometimes you might have to nick them with a knife a little bit to get those to go through. So that's exactly what I'm going to do on this one. I just want to make sure it's right where it needs to be. Then you can just nick it with a knife. And get that piece in there. And then this, I believe, rolled up underneath. And these tabs came up and held on the front end. So just for now, I like the way that front looks. It's right on that edge. Now we gotta start working the corners. I can't emphasize it enough. Just slow and steady. This is really tedious and you gotta be checking side to side, watching those seams. And this is really the tedious bit here is just trying to get this line as straight as possible. Right now, I'm pretty pleased with how this is going. I'm nice and centered for the whole thing. And I've got my front end here all battened down. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend all of these tabs all the way down the row, and then I'm gonna work on that back end. One mounting point at a time. 
and I can't emphasize how well those utility hooks worked. All right, we've got just the back end to go, just a little ways here. And uh, now I think we can all really start to cinch it up. It's looking really, really good all the way across. These worked out perfectly. These kind of added little anchor points worked out perfect. I'm feeling really good about that. It's sitting nice and straight on that seat right along the edge here with the little bead. I love it. I think we're there. We've got our slight little tip up here. So if we can get the back end of this squared away, I think we're in great shape. That last little bit is the hardest. It's where all your mistakes start to show through. All right, and now we're getting really, really close. Just trying to minimize any kind of curl over on the back side here. I'm gonna have one little ripple, I think, on each side. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be pretty damn close. And it's gonna be a massive improvement from where we were before. So I'm gonna do one more tab right there. And that should do it. One little thing that did help is just to kind of be really cognizant of folding material over and getting it out of the way. And then just trying your best to, as you tighten those down, as you push those down, that you're getting all the meat. This actually looks pretty darn good. Again, tip, move your knife. If you're not using your knife, get your knife off the table. I came really, really close to mucking that all up. All right, here we go. This is the final result for my first seat. First time ever really tackling this. I'm actually pretty pleased. This is going to be really comfy, soft. Backside came out really clean. No big bump. Maybe could have used a little bit of filler here, but I'm not worried about that at all. The front end came out really nice as well. That seam all the way through there looking really good. And I've actually got it pretty good all the way across along the bottom there. And... All the way across here got up just a little bit right there but man I think as the seat gets used I think it's gonna be okay let's take a closer look for starters this little hack worked out great those little utility hooks they gave us just enough to be able to hook through I wish I had one more hook right there i may go and try and add one but with the cover on that's going to be really really tough i'm probably just gonna gonna live with it um, we got to get the strap on that's the only thing that's next but i mean for a first tackle at it i'm feeling really really positive all right, one last little detail on this thing. I have managed to go and find a bunch of the rubber pieces that will mount inside of this. So I just need to recondition these. I'll probably um, probably just use brake fluid. Um, I don't have any of that peppermint that people have suggested before, but we gotta put the strap on. The strap goes on right through this deal. And there are a few little mounting pieces that we need to deal with. To do this well, I think a leather punch is going to help you out really, really, really well. So I just found a leather punch that was just a little bit bigger right there. Just a little bit bigger than the bolt that we're going on. So then we can start tapping all this stuff together. Let's take a, a look at a photo of, um, of what this actually looked like. So here's a look at that little band that goes across that seat. There's two pieces and it's kind of unique. You got to get it right. So if we're looking at this correctly, what we're going to do is right about here, we're going to pound in our first hole. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this, grab my hammer, give that a few taps. And there is our first hole. And what we're going to do then is insert this piece in here just like that. And then this will essentially fold down and then this would fold around. So I'm going to basically do the best I can. Actually, I need a little bit bigger punch so it gets over the ridge on this. All right, needed a little bit bigger punch. So went and got a bigger punch and I drove that through. Got a good sized hole there now. 
that we can insert this and bend these bad boys into place. All right, with this in place, this is the way it goes, I believe. I'll go ahead and grab my pliers. Just start crimping this thing down a little bit. Get this thing into position. Pretty straightforward. We just need to bend these tabs in on themselves as economically as we possibly can. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our other one and kind of guesstimate where that one's going to go. And that one's going to go in there just right about there like that. So I'm going to push down, grab my big punch, eyeball that up just like that. Get right in the middle, just like that. And I didn't get all the way through, so I got to pound a little bit harder on these. Just like that. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take this one. I'm going to flatten this thing out just a little bit. It's all bendy. All right, going to go ahead, put this one into place. We will bend this down just like we did the other one. Just like that. And get this thing bent down just like the other one. And then that is going to rotate over just like that. And this is going to mount inside the seat. All right, go ahead and attach this. Push that through. That's a really secure little anchor point right there. There is one locking washer. And then we've got a 10 millimeter nut that goes on there. We'll go ahead and get our 10 millimeter wrench. Get it going the right way. And we'll send this one home. And here we're going to just flip the seat over. We're going to pull our strap over and flip this bad boy around. Now we need to figure out exactly how long we cut this thing. So we don't get a huge dimple in it. But we get just enough of a dimple in it. So uh, I'm not really sure how to go about this to make sure that this is correct. But I'm going to eyeball it right about here for my first one because it's gonna wanna go about like that and be nice and secure. And then we'll uh, go ahead and pop the holes in and get that mounted. I think I got it, just kind of eyeballing it up. Uh, I hope I don't screw this one up, but we will see. That is punched. We can grab our cover. I just wanna make sure I get these going the right way and then and go ahead and pound our other one in right in here. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab that, eyeball this. I think it's gonna go right about there. Just kind of mark it just like that. Like that. Now we can go ahead and bend these on. Should be pretty straightforward. All right, moment of truth. We're gonna fold these over. And get these lined up. Actually, I should probably cut this, but I may cut it afterwards. And this one. Get that on there. And then we will pull this down. Hopefully be able to get the second one on. It's a little tight. That's okay. But I am going to cut this little extra piece off of here. Hope I don't screw myself on it, but we will find out. There goes one, there goes the other. How'd we do? I think we nailed it. I think we nailed it, guys. Woo! Let's go ahead and add our little locking nut right here. And we will grab our nut. And we will put this back together. Again, keep all of the darn sharp objects away. <laughs> away from your work table. I almost just stabbed that seat with the pair of scissors that I used to cut this up. Uh, one last detail, though. There is a really cool decorative chrome trim that needs to go on this seat. 
here's how I'm going to do it. Unfortunately, I don't have the original hardware. They were actually bendable pins. So I'm going to give a try to just some small little bolts that I can put in there and make it work. So here's what we're looking at. If you look closely at the inside rail of the trim, you're going to be able to see a little indent. And all I did is I head to the hardware store and I found some bolts that fit in there and slide into the channels like that. It's pretty tight. It's pretty snug. Hopefully I don't have a problem tightening these as, as I go, but we'll find out. But managed to find some nice little short bolts. If I have to grind them off or cut them off, I can do that at the end. First things first, we need to find the mounting holes along each rail. There's going to be three of them. And if I peel this up just a little bit, hopefully you can see this. I'll get a nice close look for you here. There's one of the mounting points right there. Basically, you're going to find one up on the front. Then you're going to find another one right in front of the buckle. And then you're going to find one more. Where was that bugger? Right in the back almost right straight off the hinge, there's gonna be another one right there. So there's three across this edge. I haven't found one on the back side yet. Let's keep hunting for that. I removed the hinge just to get a better look inside of here. And as I'm kind of running my finger up in here, I do not feel a mounting point on the back side. Next step is just to kind of dry fit to make sure that we're in the right spot with it. I'm gonna to have to go underneath this, so just note that. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and kind of test fit it, and then I can work my way through um, to get these bolts installed. I know I'm gonna need one back here. So let's see if we can jam this in here. Again, you just drop it into the lip, and then hopefully we'll be able to slide all these down. It's a little bit bent on this side, so I might have to pry out just a little bit. Ideally, it'd be nice to just be able to slide these bad boys in there, but it's gonna be a battle. They're just a little bit too big, so I'm gonna go ahead and grind these tips down just a little bit. Mm-hmm. How'd that work out for you, Brian? All right, I've got all of them ground down just a little bit, man. Don't overdo it. You just literally need to go zip, and then it is gonna be done. So let's go ahead and slide all my connector points on. So I should do those back ones first and then slide this in from the front. I think that's gonna be the best way because otherwise we're gonna puncture a hole in the darn thing. And that's, you know, kind of the whole reason why we restored the seat to begin with. So I'm gonna be really careful with these and I'm gonna carefully slide these underneath the little strap Make sure they're not poking anything. And I'm gonna watch these two right here. All right, let's get our rear position in first. All right, and to do this, I'm just gonna use a little propane torch. And I'm gonna heat up a punch. And I'm basically gonna just melt my way through that vinyl at those different spots. So I'm just gonna heat this up really, really good and then go around and do each one of those. Be sure not to point your fire at your seat like I'm doing right now. And then from there, I'm just gonna come around on this end. I'm gonna push through like butter, nice and level. And hopefully we can push through here. There we go, we just gotta get through the seat. And there you go, you can see it kind of protruding there. That's a nice clean line actually do that one more time if I heat it up. I actually think I'm gonna be able to push through that just fine. Yeah, that's gonna be perfect. So just like that, that's all you need to do on all th uh, five of the remainder of the six total mounting points. I'm so glad I didn't try to drill this. Melting it is the way to go. Let's get a close look at this. I'm gonna heat up the pin or the, the punch, get the punch nice and hot, I come around, find my mount point right here. I'm gonna push through just like that. And then I'm gonna support the other side and push that through just enough while it's still hot. And then I'm gonna come back in from the other side and push that through. That should be 
pretty good. All right, those first ones are in, so now I can start to kind of move this thing. This is gonna be a little tricky, I think. It's gonna get a little topsy-turvy until I get these first ones in. But I'm gonna go ahead and hopefully get this the first try. And just like that, we'll slide this thing into position once we get it. The thing's pretty, you know, it's pretty flexible. So that's a good thing. And then we can get these started and it should slide right down the track into a position of where we need. We'll just keep pushing and then we'll go over here and I'm hoping I got enough room to add in my bolts on each side. Wish I would have bought little shorter bolts, but we'll make it work. Slide this into position. Just I just really don't want to nick anything up. Just like that, pop that through, and then I'll move over to this side and we'll get this one slid on. Hopefully we don't run into any snags. Just like that. As long as it's on the track and through, we're good. <laughs> All right, now we've just got the two fronts to get on here. Slide these over into position. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping it all just slides together. Real nice. We'll see, that is yet to be determined. There we go, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and put, a, put the nut on this one. I think it's gonna work out good because I can always grab it with a plier and then tighten it up too. And then we can move over to this side. We'll get this last one in, nearing the end on the seat restoration. Glad I'm able to utilize the uh, the mounts that were existing. I'm gonna go ahead, get those in place and go around and put on all the other nuts here, just loose, just to have them in place so the thing doesn't fall out. So on this back side, you can see I've still got some some left over here. I'm just gonna start sliding this whole piece forward just a little bit and torque it just a little bit if you have to. But as we tighten this down, it's gonna go pretty fast. So I'm gonna go ahead, got this in pretty good position. I think getting this back one first is gonna be really key. This one's hung up just a little bit there, but I think I can pull it into position. So that's kind of what we're looking at. We've just got these little protrusions coming out here. I think that's gonna be just fine. We can grind these all down and get them where we need them here in just a bit. Kind of hard to show you, but hopefully you get the idea. Just pulling this in tight to the body and then grabbing my wrench and snugging these up. This actually went way smoother than I anticipated. Finding those original mounting holes was huge. Here's one little part to watch for. It's not like quite seating up against the seat on this front end. So I'm gonna pull this one back just a little bit and I'm gonna try to torque this. It might be easier just to take it off. If you run into that, just try to give it a little bit of a torque in. And that should be all that needs. See, there, perfect. You might have to finagle with this just to get it exactly where you need it, but Fine tuning, a little bit of fine tuning will get you there and you can pull it into the seat. So just wanted to show you that. And again on this one, I'm just gonna grab it with my pliers and let's send this one home. All right, that's all done. Feels really good all the way around. There's nice pressure. Didn't go too tight, but tight enough. Let's see what it looks like. I think that looks pretty damn good. I think that looks pretty darn good. It's nice and solid along each side, along the back. Pretty good, it's a little droopy over here. Eh, I can adjust that a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it. I lied, I went and fixed it. Looks great now. <laughs> and last order of business, let's get our hinge put back on. Just kind of get your material out of the way, back your hinge up into position. Don't forget the lockers. There's locker nuts that go on top of all of this. 
and then get the old trusty 10 millimeter out and send her home. Don't forget to install the three cushions. You got one there, you got one there, and you got one back there. Hopefully I can find one without a crack, but I'm not too worried about it. You got three cushions in your hinge, and don't forget your prop-up stand on these old bikes. All right, I think just last order of business is to cut these off. And here we are, the final hurdle. This seat restoration was a serious project, but it's something that anyone can do. It's doable. And we got those all cut down real good, nice and close. Good enough for me. All right. What a project. <laughs> what a freaking project, man. Um, first seat. I've never done a seat. Ran into some obstacles along the way, but we figured everything out. I'm going to go ahead and see if I've got some quick wash. Give this a little bit of love underneath here. Let's hit it. Let's protect it while we can. Just a good quick wash. Nothing crazy on that. Just clean up our work here. Let's get this thing looking. I mean, <laughs> it's not bad. I feel I feel like I did this a solid. I feel like I did this a solid for sure. Um, learned some things along the way, which is always good. But I am a freaking fan, man. Next thing, I'm gonna go ahead, let's, let's clean her up. Let's get some leather conditioner on this thing. And soak her up. Let's do it. All right, it's been sitting a minute or so, so let's just give her a wipe. Let's give her a little wipe down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. This... Actually exceeding my expectations here in a pretty big way. I really had my doubts about whether or not I'd be able to do this for some reason. Um, I don't know why, but the upholstery side thing kind of gave me a little apprehension. Wow. Let's get down low on this. Let's get down low on that. Cinematic. There is the restored 1968 CB350 seat. What do you think? It looks like the pictures. It looks like everything that we looked at. We looked at CMSNL for reference, and we also referenced old advertising photos of what that seat was supposed to look like. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. So how'd I do? on my very first seat restoration. This thing is gonna look incredible on the 1968 CB350 Super Sport. Um, in all honesty, it turned out way better than I thought it was. Again, this is the first time ever tackling something like this. And I mean, we started out at a pretty dismal place. I mean, let's go back. This is what we started with, a ratty, rusty, old 1968 CB350 seat. So as they say, not too shabby. I'd love to hear your tips, your tricks, your comments. Be sure to leave those. Also, if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe, hit that alert bell, and also hit the like button on this video if you got one tip at all. It really helps the channel keep moving forward. Also, if you want a free sticker, head on over to keeponwrenching.com. I'm shipping those out every month, so you'll see one in your inbox if you fill out the form. And lastly, go join the Facebook group. The Keep On Wrenching community group is an active one on Facebook, and we'd love to see you there. All right, I think this is a wrap. You all like the long-form videos. I gave you a long-form video on the seat restoration. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think, and we'll see you in the next video or live stream.